after traveling hundreds of thousands of kilometers across the country and working for others. My husband, Anton, decided to start his own small business. We saved and accumulated funds for a long time, even having to apply for a small loan. I used to be an accomplished economist, so I understood the ins and outs of business. And I knew that eventually, everything would go smoothly. We leased a piece of land in an industrial area with the intention of purchasing it eventually. We acquired the necessary equipment, hired a pair of excellent young individuals, and then opened our own car repair shop. Initially, our customers were mainly old friends, and later, friends of friends, and even friends of friends of friends. However, through word of mouth, customers kept coming in. One time, a man drove in with a regular tractor and a semi-trailer for a tire replacement. He stepped out of the cab. He was an older man with white hair and hands, bearing the marks of labor. But his eyes were so bright. There was a special warmth radiating from him. Despite the cold November weather and the muddy ground, this driver needed his wheels repaired. And Anton got to work while the driver went to a nearby cafe for lunch. When he left the cafe, he carried a bag of Russian pastries, which he offered to Anton before returning to his cab to rest. Shortly after, another vehicle in need of tire maintenance rolled in, followed by a large, proud cat with mottled fur, who had a raised tail. Don't fall behind. It's your turn now. The driver joked with the cat. Anton was surprised and began to inquire about the origin of this animal. The driver proceeded to recount this astonishing story. This story took place many years ago. I thoroughly enjoyed my job. And meeting with friends and colleagues brought me great pleasure. Conversations with fellow long-haul truck drivers. At cafes or gas stations. Talking about life sharing travel experiences, and recounting interesting or frightening stories were highlights of my days. At the time, I was driving an old vehicle, and one day, in desperate need of a restroom break, I pulled over near a forest and heard the sound of an animal in distress not far away. I approached the source of the sound, thinking someone had abandoned a cat by the roadside. This was a common occurrence among people. Playing with pets and then callously discarding them by the road. Where they would silently perish. In the thickets. I discovered a small kitten with spots and a short tail. However. It turned out it wasn't a kitten at all but a lynx cub that. Was less than two months old. Apparently. My vehicle had collided with it. And while the injuries weren't too severe. Without human assistance, it surely wouldn't have survived. I decided to take it home and rushed to get it to the veterinarian. Not too far from the city. Although getting there required a detour. The road to the city didn't permit the passage of large trucks. So I hurried to a nearby traffic police checkpoint to seek advice from the officers there. Who were all very friendly. One of them stayed at the checkpoint while another, equipped with a siren, accompanied me to the nearest veterinary clinic. The cub underwent all the necessary checks, received the required medication, and then I was on my way. From that moment on, the lynx cub made my truck its home. Over time, it grew and became a strong and incredibly beautiful creature. Although not very large, possibly due to not being raised with mother's milk. It became my guardian angel. We traveled far and wide, crisscrossing the entire expanse of Russia. From Kaliningrad to Sochi. From Murmansk to Vladivostok. Year after year. My truck was my home. 
And the same held true for my little lynx. I hardly ever think about marriage anymore. I've been divorced for a long time. And it's been like living as neighbors in the same apartment. She has her room. And I have mine. She has her life. And I have mine. Our daughter is now an adult. At that time. We didn't have any grandchildren yet. So we continued our travels all around the country in the driver's seat. My companion was somewhat timid, evidently remembering past unpleasant experiences with humans. She rarely got out of the truck. Except for restroom breaks. And I typically chose less populated areas for. These stops to ensure both her safety and tranquility. Inside her vehicle. There were two bowls one for water and the other. For the food I prepared for her during roadside rests. Such as potatoes. Millet sausages. Canned meat. And more. She led a good life. And for me. Being alone didn't feel lonely at all. After all. She was a living being with a soul. When we returned home. She would always sleep in my bed curled up at my feet. She had a healing touch. And when we hit the road. She would sit in the passenger seat. Gazing out the window. Taking in the scenery. And observing everything along the way I placed a cushion for her to sit on. Giving her a better vantage point. She always sat very lightly and was incredibly intelligent. She had a great fondness for music, especially Russian folk ballads. She saved me multiple times during those days. When robberies were prevalent. And we faced various hardships. But always emerged unscathed. We journeyed to every corner throughout her long. Twenty-year life. A rare feat since not every cat lives that long. Even as she aged. She remained by my side. As my hair gradually turned gray. The thought of a life without her became. Increasingly difficult to imagine. But I knew very well that the day would come. And she might have understood it too. So. She left me a parting gift by finding a replacement. And that was this miracle. She pointed to a cat. Joyfully bouncing around me. I began to notice the young lynx was gradually growing weaker. From a young age. I knew that cats often leave before their passing. But I considered the young lynx to be a cat. Even though it was a wild animal. I noticed that the young lady frequently went to a. Specific spot in the parking area. And each time. I worried she wouldn't return. But she always did. However. One day. Her absence grew longer. I had finished all my work and waited patiently. For her to return once more. I honked the horn several times. But she still didn't come back. I felt deeply concerned and desperate. Suddenly. She emerged from the roadside thicket. Behaving strangely. She paused at times. Then took a few steps into the woods before stopping again. As if she were beckoning me. As if she wanted to show me something. I understood she was calling me and decided to follow her. Following the young lynx's footsteps. I soon discovered a cardboard box with three kittens inside. Unfortunately. Only one of them was still alive. Once again. The cruelty of humans deeply touched me. Hitting me to the core. Two lives had already perished. So it was essential to rescue the sole surviving kitten. Despite being nearly frozen stiff. It was alive. I retrieved it. Cleaned it up. And placed it under the young lynx's warm belly. She began to lick it like a true mother. Providing it with warmth and care. Meticulously cleaning away each grain of sand. She accepted the little baby as if it were her own offspring. I felt relieved but knew we needed to address the issue of feeding. I went to a nearby parking lot and quickly bought a bottle. And a straw from the pharmacy. Luckily. 
the parking lot had all the necessary facilities. I began taking care of this special gift. While my young lynx walked into cat heaven. Two months later. What people refer to as the rainbow bridge. And the little kitten had grown strong. Taking her place and becoming my companion. I found that this little cat loved Russian meat pies. And now I buy them for her everywhere. I named her. Reed. Because she was found in the reeds. And her markings resemble those of a wildcat. However, perhaps I made a mistake. And maybe it would have been better to give her. A more interesting name. The driver finished his story with a smile and then said. Now it's time to end this nomadic life. My age and health no longer allow for it. I'm not used to just sitting around. Who would hire someone of my age, I don't know what to do. Anton replied. I will hire you. And your adorable little cat the driver happily accepted. As he had great admiration for this kind and hardworking man. Anton needed a skilled mechanic. And the driver also served as a guardian. The driver agreed. Saying. All right. I'll bring Reed to work with me. The two men exchanged a celebratory handshake. Feeling content with their decision. Here's the amazing story of how wolves found babies. Next to their dead parents. It's unbelievable what wolves do to babies. Evan lives in the village with his elderly grandfather. The boy doesn't remember his parents. And when he asks his grandfather about them avoids answering and tells him that his father is dead. Whenever the boy and his grandfather wandered in the woods. They would encounter a wolf there. And the animal would approach the boy and lick him. Leading Ivan to think he was a dog. He was touching him too. Stroking his head. But one day his grandfather told him it was a wolf. Confused. The little boy asked his grandpa the difference between a dog and a wolf because they are very similar. Grandfather kept walking in the woods. Describing wolves to him and the difference between him and dogs. Grandfather Nicotine once loved his grandson very. Much and regarded him as his friend. Calling him Worf since he was a child growing up. Ivan tried to understand why his grandfather gave him this name. But his grandfather told him that he loved wolves so much that he gave him the name. The two used to go to the big field owned by their grandfather outside the village, where they plowed and grew vegetables. They cut the grass in the spring and put it in the stable so that the cows my grandfather had in the stables would eat it. One day, the grandson asked grandpa why he didn't look like him. The face or the hair or even the color of the hair was different. Which left the grandfather speechless in shock. The seven-year-old boy was upset and began to blame his grandpa for not answering him for many questions. Grandpa sat down with a sigh. Asked his grandson to sit down. And started talking to him. According to the grandfather. The story goes back to eight years ago. When a group of Romans came to the village where his wife and only daughter Megia lived. There they pitched a large camp and resolved to stay till the winter was over and continue their way. The gypsies would have parties, dance and have fun, and the villagers would visit them. Maggia was one of those who enjoyed watching the gypsies dance and sing. Someone approached her one day. A strong handsome guy wants to befriend her. But she refuses at first because he is a stranger to her. And knows nothing about him. But as time goes by. She starts talking to him and finds him a smart and lovely guy. And the two fall in love. The young man's name was Nicodemus. An Italian of Greek descent who had lived in Russia since childhood. Megia told her parents that she loved the young man and wanted to marry him. But the grandfather and his wife refused, telling their daughter that the young man would leave, and would not come back, and that they did not want to be gypsies because of their 
Life was cruel and she couldn't adapt. Megia decides to meet him secretly. She loves him and starts spending most of her time with him. As the time for the departure of the gypsy caravan approached, Nicodemus tried to persuade her to go with him. But the young woman refused and said goodbye. Crying home. The gypsy left. And Megia kept weeping in front of the house. But suddenly Nicodemus stood before her smiling. Holding a ring and proposing to her. The young woman was so happy that she hurried to tell her parents. When they agreed. She moved into a wooden house not far from her father's house. Magia and her husband are spending quality time together. Something that all the villagers relish. Despite being a different size. Nicodemus also has black long curly hair. Brown eyes. And a black beard. But he is well liked by everyone because he is an energetic smart guy who can do many things. He is proficient in many trades. Megia gave birth to a beautiful boy who looked like his father. They take care of him and take him to the forest to play. One day, as the couple wandered in the woods, the father held his seven-month-old in his arms. And Magia was walking, looking for fruit in the forest. When the couple reached the freeway, Megia noticed a wolf pup in the middle of the road. As cars sped toward him, she then screamed and ran to save him. And just as she was holding him in her arms, the car slammed into her heart, knocking her in the middle of the road, dead or alive. Meanwhile, Nicodemus ran toward his wife screaming. But the other truck failed its brakes and was still crawling on the ground as the driver tried to stop hitting the man meanwhile both the truck driver and the car driver fled leaving the bleeding couple behind the little boy was lucky enough to escape unharmed the little wolf didn't die either and kept barking on the side of the road when a pack of wolves came and left the forest with the little wolf and a child Grandpa Nicodemus and his wife have been looking for their daughter and family but they have not been found. When they asked the villagers for help, they found Megia and her husband dead. And the little boy disappeared without any trace of him. Days passed and the grandparents were still looking for the boy. But they did not find him. Grandpa was desperate. And the grandmother is looking for her grandson every day because she thinks he is alive and that he might be somewhere in the forest. One month after the accident, Grandma went to the woods to look for it as usual. There she was picking mushrooms, hoping to find her grandson, but slowly began to lose hope of finding him. Grandma was tired and sat down to rest, but wanted to go to the nearby woods to have a look the grandmother entered a forest much larger than the adjacent forest of the village where she lived. When she came to a flowing river, she saw a pack of wolves running and jumping there. She didn't want to get close to the ferocious animals. But the way the wolves jumped and spun around, something in between made her slink up close to see what was going on. When the grandmother looked down from a large rock below, she saw four puppies circling and interacting with a small child, who burst out laughing. Grandma looked at the little face and was shocked. It turned out that this was her grandson. She wanted to get close to him and take him with her. But she was afraid because a large pack of wolves had returned to the den. And if they saw her, they might attack and prey on her. As night fell, my grandmother came home and told my grandfather what she had seen. The grandfather decided to pick up his grandson the next day. Early the next morning. The two of them got up early. And grandpa took the weapon and hurried to that place. When the two arrived at the den. He found the boy sleeping. Surrounded by three young wolves. But the others were absent. Grandpa took out his gun and approached the pups. He removed two of them and held the boy in his arms. But the third puppy still held on to him.
preventing his grandfather from carrying the boy away. Meanwhile, the grandfather hit him with the butt of his gun, knocked him to the ground, and walked away with his grandson and wife before. The wolves returned. On the way, Grandpa noticed that the pup had been chasing him and his wife, despite his several attempts to threaten him with a rifle. To no avail. The grandfather finished his story, sighed, and let the grandson approach him, and told him that he was the boy in the story, and that the wolf who came with him into the forest was his little wolf. His parents helped the little wolf. So it stayed with him for so long. The grandson approached his grandfather and hugged him before asking him about his grandmother. The grandfather told him she died three months after finding him. When he heard the whole story, Ivan was very excited to meet his friend who protected him for so long and approached him every day when he went to meet him in the forest. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video on social networks. We will get back to you as soon as possible.